Okay, now we have only a couple things left in our green slice. And notice that with all that algebra out of the way, we can move on to x and y intercepts of a line given the equation in standard form. And now we see we have this horrible problem. Find both the x-intercept and the y-intercept of the line given by this equation. And so what we're going to have to do now is to rely heavily on some of that algebra that we just completed. So let's talk about x and y intercepts again for just a minute. Now let's recall that any straight line except perhaps a vertical or a horizontal line is going to have both an x-intercept and a y-intercept. The line's this way, of course, you're going to have an x-intercept here and a y-intercept here. If the line is this way, or this way, or this way, that's still going to be true. Sometimes your x-intercepts are positive, sometimes negative, and that's also true of your y-intercepts. But let's look carefully now at a y-intercept point, and notice that since a y-intercept point is on the y-axis, that we don't know just what that y value is depending on where it's located because it can be lots of different places but notice that in every case the x coordinate of a point on the y axis must be zero. That's an important clue that we will use here in just a second to solve this problem. Notice on the x axis there could be an x-intercept here, or maybe here, or maybe over here, or here. But in every one of these cases, notice that the x-intercept, a point on the x-axis, is going to have a y-coordinate of 0. So this brings us to an important shortcut about x and y-intercepts. In fact, it simply becomes a rule. If you want to calculate the x-intercept, to get the x-intercept, we notice that any place on the x-axis, the y value is equal to 0. So what we will do is we will simply set the y equal to 0 and solve for x in our equation that they give us. If we want to, on the other hand, find the y-intercept, we will notice that any place on the y-axis, the x-coordinate is equal to 0. So that tells us that we're going to set our x equal to 0 and solve for y. This is going to become the method, the shortcut for solving problems such as this one. Notice here in this case we have the situation 4.8x plus 8.5y minus 5.1 equals 0. So let's take a minute and compound that problem. Now let's recall, if you want to solve for the x-intercept, what we're going to do is to set the y equal to 0 and then solve for x. So on our equation below here, we're going to set this y equal to 0. So that's going to be 8.5 times 0. And let's just recopy everything else, just as we did before. Now, 8.5 times 0 is 0. So let's recopy everything as before. Now, the 4.8x plus 0 minus 5.1 is simply going to be 4.8x minus 5.1 equals 0. And here we are in a situation that we have been in many times before. We simply want to solve for x, which means that we want to get the x by itself. So we have to get rid of the 5.1 as well as the 4.8. The 5.1 has to go away first. We will once again use the old rule, chain sides, chain signs. So this negative 5.1 is going to become a positive 5.1. Bring down the 4.8x. So we'll have 4.8x equals 5.1. I want to get the x by itself, which means that I have to divide both sides of the equation by 4.8. Calculator would be good for this. And so what we can do here is simply go back over here to our Alex calculator. Take our 5.1 and divide that by 
The answer Alex tells me is 1.0625, but they want the answer rounded to two decimal places. So we're going to look at that 1.0625. Notice that the 6 is in the second decimal place. The number that's next to that in the third place is a 2, which is not enough to round that up, so our x-intercept is going to be 1.06. Now we're going to need to repeat that very same type of thinking as we do our y-intercept. So let's go back over here and take a look at the uh, very same type of thinking for the... Now as before, if you want to find the y-intercept, we are going to set the x equal to 0 and then solve for y. So down in our equation, we'll recopy that equation and this time we'll put in an x of 0 plus everything else as before. But 0 times the 4.8 is 0, which is going to just go away because adding 0 to a number isn't going to change that. So we're going to have the 8.5y minus 5.1 equals 0. Now again, I want to get the y by itself. I've got to get rid of the 5.1 first. It's negative, so change sides, change signs. That's going to give me a positive 5.1 equals 8.5y. I want to get the y by itself now. I have to get rid of the 8.5, so what I'm going to need to do is to take the 5.1 and divide by 8.5. Once again, that's a good job for my Alex calculator. So I'm going to go over here, take my 5.1, divide that by 8.5, get the answer. And notice this time it turns out to be a nice decimal to uh, one decimal place, but since they ask for two, I'm going to write that 0 0.60 to give two decimal places. Let's check and see if that makes Alex happy. And it does.